Okay, we're holding 190. Well, it's interesting. The Gemara in Rochus, we speak about if a person sees the kindness and the graciousness <laughs> and the mercy Hashem has for a child from the time that he, the child is conceived and its development and it's the whole atmosphere the, how it's protected and how it's nourished and how it grows and as the, the fetus grows the nourishment increases and the moment the child is ready to come out the nourishment stops and how the child is pushed out of the mother and you have this helpless being coming out but Dovod HaMelech, it says, he said, he said a number of Shira Malos, various things, various thanks to Hashem. One of the things he says, he said was, first when he was in the womb, and after he was born. What is, now, the udders of a cow, where are they located? They're located by the most unclean <coughs> part of the cow. A woman's, her breasts are on her chest. It's, it's the upper extremity. To remove the child, the child should not be near the lower extremity of the body. The dignity and the cleanliness and every aspect of health, how Hashem created the woman in terms of how she cares for her child, it's something he, and he gave thanks. He, gave, he said, Shiramalus, Takurish Barhu, and he said, Eight Shiramalus, every aspect from the time of conception, he was born, he was able to develop into a human being, to give thanks for every stage of his level of development. The child is finally born. Now, what is the state of being of a, of a ch human being, a child? In terms of all its senses, it's weak. It's a helpless, a helpless being. It does not have a sense of feeling or taste. Hashem provides a sustenance from the breast of its mother. You know, one time, you know, a mother could a nurse, a child would, you'd have to get a wet nurse. Otherwise, the child would die. The child had to be nourished. There was no other, no other way to, to, to nourish the child. Mara says, in, uh, it's, it's, there's a rabbinic law that a woman who's widowed after she gives birth, she's not permitted to marry until the child's two years old. Why? Because if she becomes pregnant, and the second husband, the, the, she, the, the, she stops lactating, she'll not be able to nurse her child. And the new father, he may not provide for the child because it's not his child. The child may die of starvation. So therefore, rabbinically, a woman's not permitted to marry for two years until the child is two years old. Because after two, the child is able to continue with, with a minimal amount. But in the first two years, it's crucial for the child's survival to be nursed by its mother, unless the father fully provides the proper nourishment and will concern this, the new husband may not. Okay? So it's a chesed elion. Kodesh Baruch Hu provides the woman, the mother is able to provide the sufficient nourishment. And today we understand better than ever in terms of certain antibodies that if a child is nursed, the certain things that the child, this is what they say, is not susceptible, susceptible let's say, to allergies or many other things. What? It's very beneficial. Uh, it's not meant that a, a human being should drink cow's milk. A child should drink cow's milk. It's, it's meant that the mother should drink its mother's milk. No, sir. So you couldn't afford to pay, pay a wet nurse. A child, within the first two years, the child couldn't live. The child does not have the ability to eat on its own, so unless, Moshe Rabbeinu, right? Paro's uh, daughter, she sought out a wet nurse. He would have nursed from the, from the non-Jews. Well, what's the difference between then and now? Between today they have formula. I mean, uh, Ravi, I know you have your daughter's how old today, so you know, I'm not sure in those days they had formula, right? They didn't have, they didn't have the formula, how to work it out, okay? Today we have the formula for everything, okay? Same thing. No, no change. You have to wait two years today. That's the halacha. Right. 
No, that, that's still a concern. The, f the, the, the uh, well, most of those don't know. No, 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 not necessarily. Even, even partial nursing. Even today, it's, it's indicated even for the health of the mother, for her to recover from her uh, pregnancy, it, 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 it's beneficial to her to nurse to nurse her child. V'yazmu abori yisale mezono mishdeimo v'helfi chadam asher yimezono b'mei imo l'chola b'shadel. Hear this: the blood. The Gemara says, what is the basis for what's the basis for milk? It says, neka dam v'nesa cholov. The, the, it's converted, the blood is converted to milk. When it's, the child is in the womb, the child is nourished through the blood. It's, it becomes, it's part of the system of the mother. Whatever the mother eats is converted to blood, and whatever is in the, the nutrients or in the system, that goes into the, into the unborn fetus. What happens when the child is born? Now the mother sees, all of a sudden, she starts developing milk. She starts lactating. So HaKadosh uh, causes the conversion of the blood to the milk. Mm. Nigar ore humosok. He says it's nigar. Pleasant and sweet. Kemaino novea be satsorochlo. It's like a flowing spring. Whenever the child sucks and the more the child needs, that increases the amount of milk that the mother has. So the need of the child is dependent on to what degree the, the, the child sucks. That increases the, the, the volume of milk that the mother has, that she produces. He says, it's not a burden on the mother and the, it, the milk increases without the sucking of the child. So therefore, it's always, you know, a mother <coughs> becoming engorged if the child doesn't, doesn't nurse. So what amount of milk does the mother have? The amount, usually the amount of milk that the child needs. So the child sucks, removes that, um, that amount of milk so that the mother doesn't become engorged. So it's not only a miracle for the child, but it's, it's, it's beneficial to the mother. I mean, otherwise it would be, it would be a detriment to her. Okay, this happens. This is not the child, to tar the child when taking it from the breast. It's a known, I mean, we have a, it's not a pediatric cardiologist. Right? It's a known. Exactly, it's known. Of course, I even know this, you understand? It's not I'm teaching Alan anything that if a child, if the children are born with holes in their hearts, they have difficulty sucking. They can't, they can't suck. And therefore they can't nurse sufficiently and the amount they, they're able to take out of the mothers is a minuscule of milk. And really, it, it, it becomes a problem. What? Yeah, right, it's, it's, a, pro it's a problem. So it says, The child doesn't tire. The child doesn't have to work too hard the amount of sucking that it does, it's able to extract from the breast the amount of milk that, that the child needs. He says, there's another as aspect of graciousness, that the hole in, in, the, in, the, in the nipple is no larger than, than the eye than, than, than a needle, than the point of a needle. The milk doesn't drip out. Unless the child sucks, the milk doesn't naturally drip out of the breast. You know, child is uh, drinks a bottle, there's different sized nipples, the holes. Sometimes the child just drinks too much. It's actually the child starts choking on the milk. The hole is too big. The breast is created. It's the exact, the child never has too little, never has too much. If the mother produces sufficient amount of milk. And the hole is not too small, that the child has difficulty sucking it out, sucking the milk out. You think about this. I mean, the chesed and the wisdom and the genius and what Hashem provides for the child to be able to survive and develop normally, to be continued. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
have a, an addendum to Chomus Lovavus, Rabbi Drippel. <laughs> we got to look for a publisher. Amazon.com. She has to do it. Kalachayad. She has to. Do, it's not simple. She has to do it. Like no different than milking an animal. She she mm. dip, puts some food in a vessel, and she expresses the milk into 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 the, into that. Because other no 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 she's not permitted unless it's pikuach nefesh unless it's pikuach nefesh for the child for the child pikuach nefesh no it's not not pikuach nefesh she she may be in pain. The Gemara says in Shabbos interesting you know one time a child was born the eighth month didn't live didn't live said him. and today they're able to deal right they're able to but at one time. But at eight, the child did not survive. So, so, the, so the question is, on Shabbos, that child is mukta. It's mukta, like a piece of flesh. Let's say you have a corpse, God forbid. So the says, what happens if the mother's engorged? She's engorged, she's in pain. Is she allowed to nurse the child? Because the child will nurse, will nurse. And so she's permitted. Because the tzar is tremendous pain, so mukta is the issue. That becomes the overriding factor. One time, a child that was born the eighth month didn't survive, didn't live. It's only recently that they are able to compensate because the lungs are not sufficiently developed, so the child wouldn't live. So the child in the eighth month w was was considered like a nafel, like a, a miscarriage. So the child is mukta. But what about if the mother has to nurse because otherwise the mother becomes in engorged with milk? So the mother's in tremendous pain. So the mother's permitted to nurse even though touching the child is mukta. She's permitted to express the milk, right? The child sucking the milk. 